Hey guys, my name is John Singleton. I am head coach of the program. We are here today in Barcelona at Studio CrossFit. And in this video, we are going to be looking at strength training for CrossFit. Now, this is an extremely popular subject. And I would say, arguably, strength training is, is something that the majority of people who do CrossFit are interested in. And one of my theories on the subject is, is because it's an extremely easy thing to measure. You know, it's a very objective measurement. You know, has my clean gone up from 100 to 105 kilos? Yes, therefore I'm getting stronger, therefore I'm getting better. It also has the Instagram effect. You know, it's a short lift, it's heavy, everyone can appreciate it, and therefore it tends to be quite popular, which kind of starts to reinforce that belief. So what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to answer some questions that people have sent in. We're going to go through a little bit of our, well, the program's concepts regarding strength training and hopefully give you an overall view of strength training for CrossFit. If you like the video, please hit that subscribe button. We'll keep bringing you weekly content. Hit the like button and let's get into it. Okay, so before we begin, I just want to share with you one of my favorite quotes. And this quote comes from Westside Barber. And it states, it's a trap to think you can fix non-linear problems with linear solutions. And the concept behind this quote is that we are complex beings. You know, we're not like an inanimate object, like a piece of steel. With a piece of steel, you can quite easily calculate the forces that you need in order to create a certain type of bend in the material. How we are humans, we're complex. There's lots of factors that go into how we're performing, how we're gaining strength. You know, from in essence, a whole genome, uh, all of those genetic factors play in. Also our environmental conditions, how we're feeling that day. So it's just something to, to be aware of. We aren't these inanimate objects. We are complex beings, and therefore we need complex solutions to these problems that we're facing and today that problem is how do we get stronger. So as we go into this I'm going to start reading off some questions and give you my thoughts on the answers and we're going to go through some of you guys have sent in really inter interesting questions and and actually they're quite um, they give a lot of depth and knowledge into strength training and CrossFit. So the first question comes from Debrina and she asks is there a max ceiling for an individual's capacity when it comes to strength numbers. So in essence, you know, is there a limit of how strong someone can get? The simple answer is yes, there is a limit. The more complex answer comes into how that fits for each individual. Now, certain individuals are just naturally stronger than others. You know, as we started to get more advanced techniques, especially techniques such as genome sequencing, we can start to identify if you have the characteristics needed in order to get strong. And that's a whole different topic and, um, and something that we're starting to learn from and, and get better at understanding. But we're probably still not there and able to tell you your exact numbers of strength. And the other side of this is the nurture, you know. Am I truly living up to my full athletic potential? Is my nutrition on point? Is my sleep on point? Is my recovery on point? all of these factors will play into how strong you can be. So, is there a limit to how strong you can get? Yes. However, can you optimize that in order to get, uh, in order to reach your capacity? Yes, 100%. The type of training you're doing and the other factors that I just mentioned. The next question. Do you think putting on more body weight could be a solution? Now, Again, the simple answer, yes. Really, the more, the more you weigh, the easier it is to move an external load. However, the big question becomes in that factor is, do you want to get bigger in order to lift more weight? You know, this is not strength training purely for Olympic lifting, purely for power lifting. This is strength training for CrossFit. And therefore, the heavier I am, it is going to be detrimental to other aspects of the sport, such as body weight training, gymnastics, obviously. And therefore, we have to start playing in that equation. I want to, you know, typically for, um, uh, for CrossFitters, 
They tend not to worry too much about the weight, especially compared to other sports, such as Olympic lifting, um, such as MMA, such as boxing, where you have to fit within a certain weight category, and therefore people always play about with which weight category they can get into, if they go into a higher one, a lower one, and how they'll perform with their relative strength numbers. However, for CrossFit, we need to maintain a more quote-unquote natural weight, meaning that my body weight is good enough to be able to maintain gymnastics, but it's also good enough that I feel, I feel strong, I'm recovering well in order to hit those strength numbers. So, putting on weight will, in theory, allow you to get stronger. However, the main question you should be asking yourself is, do I want to do that? Because it will probably have implications elsewhere. The next question. I did a 12-week squat program once, and it helped tremendously at the end. But once I stopped the program, my numbers went down again. And I actually think this is a great question and an amazing example of what we tend to see. So one of the big concepts, we don't use traditional periodization. The reason being is that traditional periodization is beneficial for when you're just working on one aspect. You know, be that just working on running, your weightlifting. However, we are in a lot more complex sport within the world of CrossFit. And this is a classic example that we see, not just in strength numbers, but in conditioning as well. Someone will solely put aside time in order just to work on their, on their strength. They feel that they are, they are not strong enough, so they use this kind of, um, a, a kind of a non-complex, simple solution in order to get stronger. That is, they focus on their strength, but the trouble is when they come back, they don't hold those numbers. And this is why our concept of small continuous improvement becomes very important. So if you want to get stronger, that's great. However, trying to do it in a short period of time, we often find is very, it, in, not detrimental, but actually it doesn't improve your, um, your performance in the long run. Because when you then get back to your normal training, those strength numbers tend to drop down quite significantly. So, if you want to become a better CrossFitter, what we actually recommend is looking for continuous, small improvements, you know, just one, two kilo jumps, rather than trying to add on an extra 20% to your lifting numbers in 12 weeks. Look for continuous improvement day on day, month on month. So over a year, you may have gained a significant percentage, but alongside that, you'll have maintained or improved your conditioning, maintain and or improved your gymnastics as well thus making you a more rounded athlete and a better crossfitter. The next question, how strong do I need to be to be good at crossfit? Okay, now on the surface of things, quite a simple question, but actually it's, um, it becomes a bit more complex than that. And that's because strength is relative. So it really depends on what your goals are and aims are in the, in the sport of CrossFit. You know, do I want to be able to just compete at local competitions? Do I want to be doing extremely well within the Open? Do I want to compete internationally or do I want to compete at the Games? And those are the kind of various levels that, um, uh, within CrossFit that we have at the, the different athlete categories. Now, if you're, you know, if you're competing at your local competitions, those strength numbers tend to vary a lot more widely. Some athletes are extremely strong just naturally, whereas some athletes aren't as strong, and therefore things kind of uh, balance out over the events. But as we start to get to more, um, more structured competitions, such as the Open, where we have a, big, uh, a bigger pool of athletes who then feed into what was the regionals, now kind of sanctionals, and we'll see how this hybrid uh, model plays out, and then going into games, we can start to look at the numbers because we have more data of what you may need. So, you know, for an open athlete, and if we take the, the clean and jerk, really male athletes need to be looking at getting, say, 110 kilo snatch and 130 to 140 kilo clean and jerk. Females probably around the 70, 75, and pushing 100, 100 plus. Now, these are rough numbers because you know, each year the Open changes, so we don't necessarily have um, exact facts on the data, but we do know those are the typical numbers that someone who wants to be competitive in the Open needs to achieve. And that means that the, the strength numbers are relative to your other numbers. So what we're talking about, you know, if I as an athlete have 
the 200 kilo clean and jerk, but I'm able to do, say, five unbroken ring muscle-ups, obviously I have a big discrepancy in my strength and gymnastic numbers. So in order to become more competitive, I need to find some equilibrium. I, I could probably drop, well, I certainly could drop my um, strength numbers in order to get my lifting numbers up. But when that starts to become, I have 10 unbroken ring muscle-ups and my max clean and jerk is 150 kilos, we start to become more and more balanced on, on that kind of line of where I am as an athlete. So as we look at that next stage, and, and we'll keep the term regional athlete, you know, really the regional level athletes need to be hitting 120, 150, snatch clean and jerk, and then on the female side they need to be looking at 80, and then moving into 15, 110. And then as you get to the games level, we ha see that slight jump again. One thing that's very interesting, um, I believe in 2016 there was the max snatch event, and what we found is that you know 120 kilo snatch, it really didn't get you any points at the games. You needed to be going 120 kilos plus, 125, 30, and I believe the top lift was somewhere around 140 kilos, and the females, again, in that 95 kilo range for the top snatch. So how strong do I need to be to be a good crossfitter? First of all, you have to identify what level you want to achieve, and then you can start to break it down on there. The best way is to look at the most recent numbers, be that from the games, from the regionals, from the, um, from the open, and then kind of correlate with there. But I, the one thing I would say that becomes very important is that you correlate those numbers with conditioning numbers, with gymnastics numbers as well, so you're not just taking one metric and using that. One thing that we've always preached um, in the program is stronger does not necessarily equal better CrossFitter. And that's something that's very important to know. You know, you need good conditioning, you need good gymnastics, and you need to be strong. Strength is just one factor. You need a certain minimum depending on your level, but if the other factors aren't in place, it's going to be meaningless in that competition setting. So, in summary, strength training for CrossFit is obviously important. However, it's no more important than your conditioning or your gymnastics. If you truly feel that it's your strength numbers that are holding you back, we actually brought out something called the Program Strong, which is a programming that biases towards strength, however still has a focus on maintaining conditioning and gymnastics, so you can uh, kind of booster up that strength whilst maintaining the other numbers, if that is going to help you get towards um, the next level as an athlete. However, if your numbers are all fairly, fairly similar in terms of your conditioning, gymnastics and strength, then following a continuous program such as the program daily or the po program elite is going to be beneficial to you. And then looking for small continuing improvements. And those small improvements may just be small percentage um, numbers increase over the months, over the years. And what you will find is that um, taking that continuous approach is going to give you a lot more consistency as an athlete than having these big jumps in numbers, big falls in numbers, big jumps in numbers, big falls in numbers. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, it's obviously a complex subject, but you can place them below and on the next video we will get back to you.